Rocks found in northwest Scotland are unique, the oldest dating back more than two billion years. This so-called Lewisian gneiss, that now forms the typical landscape in the region, is a metamorphic rock and is a result of forces acting in the deeper parts of the earth. Sedimentary rocks, with names such as Torridonian, Basal Quartzite, Pipe Rock or Fugweed Beds, were formed much later and dominate mountaintops in the area. Through time, in particular erosion by ice, has shaped the landscape that dominates northwest Scotland today. Students from the University of Edinburgh visit this area every year. The excursion kicks off in Edinburgh. Simon and I, we've got James and Martin. <laughs> The first step is getting to know the rocks. So what can we talk about with that colour? Yeah, texture. Let's see whether it's maybe it's massive or it's finely laminated. Knock on Crag is the first port of call. It offers easy access to the various individual rock types, but also displays larger successions of different rocks. Later, other locations in the area are visited and findings summarised at night. The north's on that side, so the way you can do it is if you're looking at looking at a section like that, and you know north's that way, put a north on your left hand side. Why, why do we think it's a sill? One of the, the key features is that you can see that it's got some sort of cooling joints that are in that vertical, have a vertical alignment, and you just wouldn't see that in, in sediments. This hill uh, is the amorphous landscape, that's the Lewisian. It's an erosional surface. On top of it is the Torridonian sandstone and you'll find that the Torridonian sandstone goes into the dips and out of the dips of the Lewisian. To your left here you can see the, uh, the quartzite. You've got an unconformity between the Lewisian and the Torridonian. it has been some time for erosion to occur and you've got an unconformity between the pipe rock and the base of quartzite and the Torridonian. You should know about these big mountain forming thrust faults is they tend to be low angle. So the Moin schist has been thrust over this package of sediments. At least that's what we saw at Mount uh, The Moin thrust is only the topmost thrust of a, of a whole system of thrust faults that formed during this mountain building process. In the lay-by, and we're just at the kink. The fact that we've got a dike here, a nice just a metre away from me, that's a pretty, that's a pretty definite boundary to on the map. Then, did see a large outcrop of Torridonian sandstone. I thought it was pretty cool. The split second in history for that May, and it's like fox over a billion years old, and it's still there. You can see, so I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> So the next layer we've got to, we've got to turn it to the people of it. I want to say green more And then actually you've got another port site. And then we've got the limestone. That's the very top. What type of fold is this? Um, it's a thick thing. It's a thick line. A thin form, okay, good, yeah. After these introductory days, it is time for the real deal, starting with a location where the contact between the Lewisian gneiss and the Torridonian sequence is exposed. Um, today's segmentology, we're going to go look at the Torridon, uh, Torridon sandstone. It's actually quite a complicated formation that covers a long period of geological time, and today we're going to have a look at half of that. Um, now it sits, what was it sitting on? Anybody remember from the mapping? Nice. Oh, nice, okay. So we had jagged bits of Elysian nice. They were still in coordination with each other. And they were infilled by mud still and sandstone. It sits on top of the Elysian. Uh, the I mean, what kind of time gap are we talking about? Billion years. Yes, at least a billion years. I looked at the uh, debris flow section, so 
where it was much larger and green air petals and boulders at the top. <laughs> Um, I'm mostly classical composed of Louise in nice. In, within the Louisiana, you find some of the amphibolites. Here we've got blocks that, that come from different places, which are gathered here. From around the corner at Sky Bridge, mm -hmm. we're moving down the succession mark in each. Uh, change in the green size, it's change in rock type if there has been one. Meter 50. And what do you expect further up the road? We're going to get into the Fucoid succession. Yeah, that is, that is Fucoid bed. What we're seeing is uh, we think there's, there's a fault, a fault. Okay. bringing it down to there. Check it, west side. We're here with none other than my main met Lucas and Tam. Dem is going to tell you what has been going on up in these belts, yeah? Check it. <laughs> We got some Cambrian, got some major pipers going. It's totally crazy. We got quartz slashing in. Ah, uh, it's nuts out there. Grey, pink, everything you want. So we started today at Malamik Beach, um, which will be the oldest road. So we're going to start at the bottom of the succession. First color, we had um, like paley, pinky, orangey bits. And then smaller scale, we had some black bands in there as well. Which is the famous boudinage, which is French and sausage. <laughs> Is it very intact or is there anything uh, specific you observed about the knife at the contact? Would you characterize it as fractured? Yes. yes. The landscape in northwest Scotland is largely a result of erosion by glaciers. Erosion by rivers aided in shaping the morphology in the area. A part of the excursion is dedicated to studying the geomorphology. One exercise is to map features like moraines or fluvial deposits. Measuring the flow speeds of rivers in the area allows to determine how much water is transported in a given time. Measuring water transport, though, is not without challenges. Losing the measuring rod, for example, requires urgent action. Everything turned out fine. The rod was recovered and nobody hurt. And yes, the measurements were great. Further up the road, additional measurements were carried out. Just now we've been collecting sediment data. So we've collected sediments from the rocks and counted them mm -hmm. using the what count? The Woolman count. Um, yeah, taken sediment from the bed of the river um, behind us and um, uh, measured the uh, size of the grain and the lithology it comes from. Um, and we're using this to work out provenance and the distance the sediment has travelled. Eventually, we will calculate the discharge of, um, of this channel, which is a measurement of is it stream efficiency power yeah, in, in yeah. the channel. And what will that be used for? Well, it's just calculating the discharge of the river when it's not a bank for an animal. There is no point denying it. At times it rains in Scotland. But hey, that's part of the package. And there are other challenges. There's so many midges! <laughs> When it is not raining, it is very obvious why Scotland is world famous for its natural beauty. Scenic landscapes, idyllic lochs and cosy beaches. All this adds to the unique way the northwest of Scotland allows studying its geological history.
During the excursion, recreational activities are part of the program. Interested in learning more? Please visit our website at www.ed.ac.uk slash geosciences. Thanks for watching. See you around.